Why, hello there and welcome to Afternoon Express. My name is Danilo Cristo and we're live right here on SABC3. Now, if you have got a creative bone in your body, I'm going to tell you to make sure you stay tuned to the show from beginning right until end. We've jam-packed the show today with some of the most amazing guests and topics for you. First of all, if you are a multidisciplinary artist, so you know what that is, this is going to tickle your fancy. The guy we've got in the loft today, he is an architect, He's a drawer, he's an artist, fashion designer. If it's creative, you name it, he can do it. His name is uh, Unatium Conto, and he joins us in the loft today. Plus, we've got internationally renowned photographer Roger Ballin joining us in the loft. He has done amazing things with his career. Can't wait to show you some of his images later on in the show. Now, creatives always have this thing where they're associated with clutter. And if you want to learn how to declutter your life, we've got the expert in the loft with us today to share how you can declutter yours uh, on the show today. Plus, if you've ever heard of the Princess Project, we'll catch up with them and find out about the amazing work that they're doing in our country at the moment. Uh, we need to also cook in the kitchen today, and here we're making something so delicious, so small, and so different, right, Bon? I think you're talking about me, Danilo. <laughs> I'm Bonnie Bully. Welcome to our Loft Kitchen. Today we're making you a delicious sweet treat. That's also an amazing way to spend time with your kids over the weekend. And joining me is our chef extraordinaire, Clem, my favorite chef. Oh, thank you so much. So this cookie we're making, we're calling it the everything cookie. That's quite a brave statement to make. So this cookie better impress. Definitely. And we spoke about how today we're going to learn about decluttering our lives. But today we're going to learn how to clutter a cookie and make it just the most and amazing thing ever. taste buds. Exactly. Okay, can't wait awesome. to get into it. I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. Let's head back to the couch with Danilo. Don't forget, guys, you can get that recipe from our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, because it's got every ingredient you can imagine in it, just like our next guest. So from architecture to fashion design to drawing and photography, there isn't a medium of art that intimidates this young man. His distinct style is drawn from these disciplines, and his work is centered on an ongoing project titled Boys of South Africa that comprises photographs, paintings, and expressive drawings of objects, faces, and shapes. Joining us in the loft is artist Unatium Gonto. Really cool to have you, dude. Thank you. So you have done it all, my friend. Yes. I mean, like I know, I try and do radio, I try and do television, try and do all my other products that I have on the side. How do you focus all your energy on all of these things? Are you like brilliant at them all? Um, it's a transition. You move from this one to the next one, uh -huh. and you take what you can and um, use it on the next one. They're actually quite connected, uh -huh. so okay. you'd, 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 you'd handle them, yeah. Good. Well, I'm excited yeah. to talk to you today because I find chatting to artists one of the most difficult things to do because they're so in their head and they're so creative that to try and get an understanding of who they are and what they're up to is one of the most exciting projects for a TV presenter. Yeah. So let's begin right at the beginning. How did you get involved in all these creative fields? Did you study one specific one and then branch out? I studied architecture and um, from architecture, I moved into fashion, but I was never the architect that was um, conforming. I was always a rebel. I was always, mm. but I knew that there was something I had to do that was different from other architects. Okay. So I moved on to fashion, but I found fashion to not last long. Mm. It was overconsumed all the time. And I would see all my work in an art gallery, not yeah. in a retail store. <laughs> So from there, that's when I decided to yeah. move, move, move into art. So you yes. really are all about the art. I mean, a lot of artists yes. are like that. They want to just take pride in their work and not have it become this public thing. Um, what exactly drives that creative spark in you? What makes you want to, to be so expressive through these art forms, if it's not for commercial reasons? Yeah, I feel I have a responsibility to archive and um, as an image creator for our, our time. And mm. that's how I see myself. Uh. And I need to sort of leave something behind. Legacies. Yes. I yes. like that idea. Yeah. So speaking of which, let's talk about straight into that project of yours, uh, The Boys of South Africa. Um, yes. What an interesting project. And for those who want an overview of what it is, please tell us what exactly The Boys of South Africa is. Um, Boys of South Africa is about um, South, South Africa to start with. Um, and The Boys is a sort of a conceptual add-on. <coughs> um, the project consists of, of drawings. Um, it's set um, in, in uh, cricket um, in 1972, mm -hmm. where um, South Africa was not allowed to participate in, uh, in the in international, international yeah. games. And so I've used that as a setting, and I've brought in illustration, and I've brought in photography. Mm -hmm. And um, in, the photo in, the, in the photographs, I'm trying to sort of represent people that were not represented at the time. And um, oh. also in the drawings, I am adding uh, people that were omitted, mm. people were not represented in the games, and people that are still not represented. 
today. I see. So I see yeah. these photos we're showing on screen now. A lot of the faces are black faces. And you would imagine that during our cricket times when we were sanctioned from joining the World Cup was because we weren't uh, conforming to those sort of equality laws uh, internationally. Yeah. And you represented that through your artwork. Now, what I find interesting is that besides all the drawings that you've got, you've also displayed a whole bunch of photographs, if I'm not mistaken, too. Yes. But some of those are not South African people, correct? Yes. Why are you then calling it the boys of South Africa? Um, when you question what is South Africa and um, where we want to be, it's all about um, thinking next. Um, it's, a, it's a world um, I envision where South Africa is, uh, is representing everyone. Mm. So I try to leave the country and then when I come back and I take photographs and I imagine us living in a world where people yeah. are coming from different places. And as you can see from today, Africa is already in South Africa and South Africa is mm. going to other countries. So there's, there's an exchange of culture. It's globalization, I yeah, think, exactly. at, at its best. I mean, yeah. besides all of your displays that you're doing and these massive activations that you've got going on, mm. I mean, you've also decided to work underneath uh, an incredible um, performance artist. Um, tell us about that journey, and, because obviously you want to have many fingers and many pies. Yeah, um, for me, I, I look at it as a learning. This is a learning stage in my life. Um, working, working with RT, it's been two years, and um, an inspiring artist. Um, is telling the, the most important story of our time. But for me... Which is? Which is, um, it's called a Zenia. Um, it's a world where it's telling a story about um, where we come from and where we're going. Mm. Um, it will need further explanation. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, I take it as a, as a, learn, as a learning stage. I would like to yeah. learn from as many people as I can, um, whether it's, it's through work, mm. whether it's through friendship or collaboration. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think most South Africans must have a chance to at least experience your art because as you enter into a piece like The Boys of South Africa or you go and see one of the pieces that you've created, mm. you want to instill some kind of emotion or make people think a little bit as they go. So rather than trying to explain people what it is they should be experiencing at these sort of uh, displays, when can we come and actually just experience your work uh, in, in the flesh? Um, at the moment, there's a, a Cape Town Art Fair which is starting tomorrow. It's a launch tonight. And it's at the convention center. And I'm um, showing with Salon 81. It's both A3, yes, that's correct. And also at that art fair, which is in, in Woodstock at the Palms. I've also got a, a few artworks. Okay, when is that going to be on? That's, that's ongoing already. It's okay. lasting for another week. Um, art fair is throughout this whole weekend. Awesome. Yes, k -Town Art Fair. Well, I'm yes. definitely going to go try and see if I can check it out just to instill some of those emotions because I'm sure understanding Hopefully. where South Africans were then and where they are now is, is very interesting. So, Nati, thanks for joining us on The Loft today. Uh, my pleasure. It's so yeah. good to have you in thanks The Loft. Me. Now, after the break, South Africa, we're making cookies containing pretty much everything except the kitchen sink. And we chat to iconic photographer Roger Ballin about his latest projects. Don't go anywhere. Goodness comes naturally. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, live right here on SABC3. Now, one of my favorite things about this show is that every day there's always something different. And I think if you were to take all the guests and all the content and all the ideas, all of you guys at home were to kind of mush you all together, Afternoon Express would have been created. And so what we've done is we've kind of represented that in the kitchen today. We're making a cookie, and it's called the everything cookie, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's basically got everything in it. So if you'll see on the table here, I've got things like sweeties, I've got pretzels, there's some chocolate here, some chips, and I just want to understand why, why? is it that you want why? us all to die young? It's not about that. You know, we, like you said, we do so many recipes that are health focused, yes. and then we play around a bit with dishes like this. And this is quite a sentimental recipe for me. Okay, so I'm not going to lol, I'll lol, because I'll live a little. So lol. Live a little lol. So, lol. Okay. Okay, okay so, so we'll let me, let's, let's get um, cracking on the ingredients while or I tell mixing. you. We don't have to crack anything. <laughs> while okay. I tell you why the inspiration of this um, dish. Cool. So it's called the everything cookie because literally we're adding everything to it. Okay. It also goes by the name of the kitchen sink cookie because uh -huh. it's everything besides. <laughs> exactly. And sink. the compost okay. cookie. It's crazy. <laughs> but for me, the idea behind this cookie is it's, it's about you and what you like and 
um, all those amazing ingredients put into one cookie. Okay. okay. You've already started without us. I see you've put a bit of sugar in there. What sugar are you using? I'm using the Salati Demerara because okay. that's going to give us that fudgy chew Ooh, to the cookie, and that's yum. very important. Oh, I remember so, once when I was very, very young in the in the States, I went on a cruise, and the, these they had these little chocolate chip cookies that they they used to give you, and they had this nice chewy to them. I think a lot of us like to think that your cookie should be really crunchy. There's something no. about a moist cookie that is delicious. Absolutely. So I've used three sugars: the Salati Castor Snow, the Salati Demerara, and the icing sugar. Okay, I'm gonna go in with some butter and start creaming that. So this cookie, it's quite rich. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's got so much in it, but that's what makes it so amazing because you should just be eating a quarter of it. So what do you do with the other part you got <laughs> left over? So <laughs> tell me why. It. No, don't worry. Tell me we why you like. I'm not gonna tell you. We just share it with our friends. I guess that's why we eat a quarter. You have to share it. That's the <laughs> idea. So you're gonna find someone that you you really like and share this cookie with. Yes, okay. It's you and me in the kitchen. So I'm going to share well, it with you. I, I think you and I probably can have a whole one to ourselves each. Exactly. But we'll try and do some sharing because I know there are other guests in the loft with okay. us today. So I'm creaming up that salon. As soon as that's starts getting together, you would normally do this as nice and pale and fluffy. Yep. In with your eggs. And if you've got whites and the yolks in there. Hey? And then just, those, those are just yolks. Just yolks, okay. And then an extra, ooh, look, I'm working on the side. There we go. Sheesh. In there. That all comes together. And now comes the ingredients. Okay. And you can add it, okay? So what I go, what goes first? So those are candy and chocolate coated peanuts. Okay, so you can find pretty much anything that's candy and chocolate focused. Exactly, you go in with it. These um, are peanut butter filled salted pretzels. Oh, yum. And we're playing a lot with the salty and the sweet combination because the world is mad about that combination. Yes. Hence, we're using salted kettle chips. Whoops. And kettles are nice because they're nice and crunchy. They're so much more crunchy. Exactly. Look at that. Just go, go, go. Oh, bang it all in. Just, just get that in there. And exactly. And oh. We're not being crazy about adding Just crisps. have fun with it. Just tuck everything in and hope <laughs> that it like mixes them. And poor machine that sounds sound. like it's... That sound is crazy. Ka, 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 ka. Milk chocolate. White chocolate. Oh, yummy. And if you don't have a machine like this at home, you can do it by hand. Believe oh, it or not. It's not painful. that hard. Oh. Because he's tried, obviously. He said, I don't have one of these machines at home, so he's tried with this thing. Okay. Absolutely. Bring it all together. What is in this cup here? What is this? That's our vanilla extract. So we could oh. actually have to add it now. First, we do it earlier. Shot for pointing that Oh, out. I didn't notice. Okay, well, there we go. Some vanilla essence. Vanilla essence. Yummy. And it's that easy. Get and these two? No, no, that's fine. What I was going to talk to you about the fact that if you don't have salted pretzels, add a little bit of rock salt to it. Uh, That'll just give you that little bit of extra saltiness to the biscuit. Oh, I see. And then the baking powder, just um, serve that with your flour. So basically, at the end of the month, when you've decided that you've used all of your ingredients at home, and you've got some of these random things left over in your closet, these are all the things that you kind of just throw into cookie batter, and you just put it in the oven, and hopefully it comes out looking delicious. So how long actually does it go in for? Um, it's going to go into the oven. Once the flour's been incorporated with the baking powder, it goes into okay. the oven for about 10 minutes. So you keep that soft, center, gooey, ooey, chewiness oh, in your yum, biscuit. Yum. I think it's interesting. Sorry, just why exactly do you add the flour at the end, not at the beginning? Because you don't want to overwork the cookie. So get all your ingredients or the chocolate, everything uh -huh. mixed into that cream, sugar, and butter mixture, and mm. then the flour. And then the flour adds yeah. at the end. Okay, that sounds amazing. So that it keeps it this nice and chewy flavor. You heard it from the chef himself. You can find the recipe on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and make these at home. It's a fun exercise. Add it to one of your party lists of things to do. In the meantime, on Afternoon Express today, we've got a very exciting guest. Bonnie's got those details. Well, guys, if you want to also make something amazing in your kitchen and you're feeling a little under-equipped, then remember to go and enter the Diners Club competition we're, that we're running on our website. We're giving away two 1,000 Rand online shopping vouchers, which you could use to treat yourself in the kitchen. Visit afternoonexpress.co.za forward slash giveaways for more details. Now, though, American-born Roger Ballin is one of the most influential and important photographic artists of the 21st century. His body of work spans over 40 years, and he's renowned across the world for his photos depicting what he describes as humanity's shadow side. We went to his latest exhibition launch in Johannesburg. Let's take a look at this. So we're at Gallery Momo right here in Johannesburg and we're about to view Roger Ballin's retrospective and this is work that has spanned a career of over 50 years titled today The House Project and these are images that have never been viewed by the world so we get to enjoy for the very first time. So how is it that this collaboration came to be with Roger Ballin? 
Gallery Momo has been working with Roger Ballon for some time and it seemed like the right, the perfect time when he did this collaboration with Didi Bozin, who's a philosopher, on the book that they just came out with called The House Project. It could not have been a better time for us to have this exhibition and Roger had a bank of work and new work that he was ready to exhibit in South Africa. So we're quite privileged as Gallery Momo to be the first ones to actually host the exhibition of The House Project. Your relationship with South Africa goes back a very, very long time. It certainly does. I first arrived here in 1974 after hitchhiking from Cairo to Cape Town. And then I came back here permanently in 1982 and I've been living in Johannesburg ever since then. Tell us a little bit about the House Project. The House Project is a, a project that I worked with an Italian uh, writer and we made a house or divided a house into four floors. There's a basement uh, which reflects the primeval mind, the primeval self, and then there's a ground floor which deals with human folly, human absurdity in photographs, then a first floor which uh, deals with people's obsession with order, and finally an attic uh, which tries to make a comment on people's relationship to themselves and the heavens. It's a very interesting concept to align the metaphor of art and psychology. The metaphor of the house in relation to the mind goes very, very deep, where Roger starts to explore uh, through imagery and photography um, the different levels that, um, that the mind operates in. Yes, I absolutely love the work. I love the, the theatricality of it, the mise-en-scene that he, he brings, um, a bit of the theater of the absurd. Um, all of these kind of darker aspects to society are quite interesting. And I think this is a bit, as I, as I understand, these are works that have not been seen um, um, many of them have never been seen before, so it's also quite a, a luxury to get a chance to look into his archive a bit. It, it's been very fascinating, quite challenging, intellectually, intellectually stimulating, to be quite honest. I like the whole concept of, you know, thinking of the mind as different parts of the house kind of thing. I especially enjoyed the cellar. This is the first time I've seen Roger's collection. Uh, the best piece for me was in the attic. Uh, the piece that had Jesus Christ as the center, um, for me, it spoke to me a lot. Uh, it's not easy to say why do I like it. Um, to, to put it mildly, I'm a follower of the artistic trajectory of the artist Roger Balen, basically. So when I knew that he'd be showing his new body of work, so I came running. What do you think about the turnout tonight? Tonight is very indicative of how uh, the city is being ignited by uh, culture and the art scene. Uh, for instance, with this opening of Roger Balance at the Gallery MoMA, there's also another opening happening across the way at Goodman Gallery of another big South African artist, William Kentridge. And we're quite happy. I mean, we were very nervous, you know, which camps people will choose. But, you know, the turnout has been phenomenal. And it, it should be like this on a, on a daily basis where people are out and interacting with the art and that we're able to stage and host big artists simultaneously in this big city of Johannesburg. Welcome back. We're lucky to have the master, Roger Ballon, in the loft with us today. Welcome to the loft. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, awesome. So let's start at the beginning. In 1974, what drew you to South Africa? You went, you hitchhiked from Cairo to South Africa. Yeah, I hitchhiked from Cairo to Cape Town in 19... 74, I was part of the counterculture, and we were very dissatisfied w with what was going on in the Western world. So we were trying to get away from it. And I went as far as Cape Town, and I didn't feel like going to the Antarctic. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then you finally came back in 1982 to yeah. settle. What was it about coming here the first time that drew you back, that made you well, want to come and live here? I, well, I guess there were a few things. The first thing uh, was I had married a South African woman, the second thing, I have a doctorate degree in geology, and I, this was an ideal place to um, uh, work in that field. And I also found the country really interesting and stimulating and enticing to come back to. What, I, I listened to one of the people who were at the launch, and they said that, at the exhibition, and they said that your work was intellectually challenging, and I've mm. looked at some of it myself, and I, and I can certainly agree. What is it about your work that makes it intellectually challenging, do you think? Well, it's not only intellectually challenging, it's emotionally challenging. Of course, yeah. And so uh, the, the issue is that the mind actually can't um, 
necessarily comprehend all the aspects of the pictures, but intrinsically it, it understands them in a certain way that it wants to uh, resolve them, but it mm. can't resolve them. So it mm. uh, provides a, a sort of a, a pr provokes the, the mind to sort of uh, go inside and, and try to find out what the pictures are about. Right. To it's provocative, put it's it that provocative. way. It's provocative, it know. certainly is. And to quote you, you said that some of your best photographs are the ones you don't understand yourself. Yeah, you know, if I understood them, I wouldn't be taking the pictures anymore. Mm. I always say when the puzzle comes together, then that's the end of my photography. Wow. So, you know, it's a way of, the pictures are in a way ahead of my conscious mind and mm -hmm. I have to grow into them. And I think those are the best pictures always. Yeah. Wow, so you're quite a multi-dimensional artist and mm -hmm. you incorporate other types of techniques, for example, drawing yeah. into your work. How did this come about? Well, I uh, started uh, drawing and painting in 1973 in New York and I got really interested in, in it almost in a fanatical way for about three months or four months. Then it stopped. <laughs> it stopped. And then in the 80s and 90s, I spent a lot of time running around the countryside here and there were certain houses where the parents let the children draw all over the walls. And I started to take the pictures of people against these drawings. Mm. And then this started to provoke my mind into thinking maybe uh, there would be a way of integrating painting and drawing and photography. And beginning in 2003, I stopped making portraiture because all my pictures before 2003 were nearly all portraiture. Yeah. And then the face disappeared and they were replaced by drawings to a certain degree. Wow. And some other work that you've done is directing. Mm. You directed our very own, very famous export from South Africa, the Antwerp, yeah. and you went on to win awards for it. Yeah. And the videos are very interesting. Yeah. What was that experience like, and where did you get the ideas and the concept for it? Well, I mean, uh, the Antwerp uh, told me on many occasions that I invented them. So, wow. So basically... Um, That's quite an accolade. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> So we would try to work uh -huh. together for many, many uh, years, and uh, and we and in some of their videos they had a lot of my uh, uh, drawings and my aesthetic in them, and and this time went on, and uh, then we decided to work on the freaky video, although we had indirectly worked on the others in some way, and then the freaky uh, video uh, went to the moon. I think it has like 77 million hits now. Wow, wow. Tell us about the Roger Ballin Foundation. What does it seek to do? The purpose of the Roger Ballin Foundation is to promote the understanding of aesthetic photography in Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. So right now we're offering uh, an award to the most important art photo art fair in the world, which is Paris Photo, for a person under 30 who makes still lives uh, using um, animals in a Roger Ballin aesthetic way. I could talk to you forever, Roger. Thank you so much yeah, for joining us. thanks for inviting us. me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. If you are in Johannesburg, you can catch Roger Ballin's work at Gallery Momo until the 28th of Feb. After that, the exhibit will move to Cape Town, and you can find more details on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. For now, though, Jeannie is on the standby. After the break, it's time to share another moment with Five Roses. Green tea is loaded with polyphenols and nutrients that have powerful effects on the body and mind. It's high in antioxidants, which helps to clear out our systems of damaging free radicals, leading to improved health and wellness. Its healthy properties make it a truly beneficial beverage to enjoy either hot or even as an iced tea any time of the day. Our next guest is Kate Emerson, the quick shift Deva who believes in clearing and decluttering our homes our bodies and our minds in order to improve our lives and create space to live in. Stay with us in the spirit of clearing out the bad and embarking on healthy new beginnings. We'll be talking to Kate over a cup of Five Roses green tea after the break. Five Roses blends only the top two leaves of the finest Ceylon teas because nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, our next guest has augmented a degree in industrial psychology with studies in neurolinguistic programming, reflexology, and life coaching. She is a prolific writer who has become something of a niche expert in the field of decluttering. Kate Emerson, welcome to Afternoon Express. It's so fantastic to be in your loft. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I remember a few years back, I was feeling quite heavy, and a dear friend said to me, 
Start clearing, sprinkling, clever phrase. And let <laughs> things go in your house, and you will in turn feel lighter. Is this the essence of decluttering? Completely. It's about simplifying. It's about getting out of overwhelm. I think of it a little like having too many browsers open on your computer yeah. and everything starts shutting down and closing down. So it's about releasing energy and being a little lighter. How do you physically go about decluttering? So like practical steps? Yes. So I always say I believe that anybody can do it if they're given the right steps and the right hints and tips and advice. So I always start off with three questions. So yeah. the first one is get, grab a pen and paper if you're at home. Uh, do I love it? Not like love. <laughs> it's got this to is have, a tough question. No, it's love. You know if it makes you smile like yeah. you just did. Not, yeah. None of that like, yeah, sure, it's okay. It's not an okay, it's a love. That's yeah. the first one. The second one is, and this is where we can con ourselves, do I use it? Okay, so that, you know, maybe oh, it's that difficult when it's wardrobe items. No, exactly. So wardrobe <laughs> comes with a little kind of... Um, Add on, which is, have I worn it? You know the rule for the yeah. last year. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she grimaces at me. And then yeah. the third one, which actually is the most important one, is does this, whether it's stuff, a person, um, an energy around you, mm. does it add value to my life? Yeah. Because then it links to the definition which I teach, which is clutter is anything that no longer serves, serves you. you. I'm a big believer in, like in my home, having an environment around me that is beautiful and that makes me happy. Exactly. So decluttering is huge in that. Exactly. And it's, it's about respect for me. It's, it's yeah. quite a spiritual concept, but it's respecting your space. I yeah. mean, can you imagine if this beautiful studio was filled with stuff and magazines everywhere and dirty, dirty cups and just people wouldn't watch exactly. the show. They want to take a deep breath and they want to be inspired and so that's how we need to feel when we exactly. open our wardrobes exactly. or walk into our homes or go into our garages heaven forbid we yeah. want space so that we can always have the energy of new and fresh flowing through our lives that's so important because that, that really does change your mindset completely and it is a mindset okay but what happens because i'm a big chucker but i know like my mom isn't she can hold on to things that are sentimental what yeah, happens sure. when you've got sentimental yeah, absolutely things? so I don't say people have to throw away anything. So, for example, this is my granny's tiki bracelet. You know, she lived to 97. Aww. I've been wearing it for a couple of years, and I love it. I also lost it once, and I had to go, oh, my goodness, I've lost Gran's bracelet. Oh, no. And I had to kind of deal with that because we associate people to stuff. Yes. So you don't have to let go of anything. What I say, though, is is it is it bringing you joy in your life? And if not, then maybe it's time. So it requires honesty. It yeah. requires courage. I also talk about how do you let one, like, almost... Um, personify many. So do you need, let's say you've got 40 tablecloths from Granny, okay, who died 50 <laughs> years ago, and you really don't love them, but you think, well, let me keep one, and maybe the one you frame, or you use the one, and the others perhaps... Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so bring them into your life. I, I remember once working with a client, and she had kept, like, years of... Do you remember the old um, movie stubs? Like, they were quite big, and she had a pile no. of them, kind of like a wad of money. And she was a scrapbooker, but they were taking up all her space in a room that she, she wanted for just scrapbooking. Collectors. Exactly. And so we said, why don't you let one and scrapbook it and allow it to just be beautiful and meaningful mm. and empowering. Like the so, best movie. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, I think, about having clarity about what's important to you because often people don't look at their stuff mm. just out of default and they just keep stuff year after year. Exactly. And I think for me, it's about not believing that we are open to change. So our tastes change, our bodies change, our, you know, what we love changes. Yeah. And if we don't look at our stuff every year... What's that saying about our self-respect? Yeah, you've got to let go of the old to allow for the new. Exactly. Now, clutter is one thing when it's got to do with old furniture and movie stubs. But what about emotional clutter, like emotional baggage? So I think that for me, I, you know, there's a triangle for me. So there's the body, the emotional and the physical. Mm. So that's the stuff that every single one of us deals with. Because, you know, some of our viewers might be fairly organised in their physical space. But we are human creatures so we always yeah. have stuff going on with people and so I collect people I must be <laughs> I really <laughs> <And> do <laughs> every now and then you might have to let one or two of them go mm. I remember when I was about 20 my dad irritated the heck out of me by saying we are who we hang around yeah and but it's like, true it is true but I really didn't like him saying that <laughs> and I've learned that as I get older and you know it's you don't just willy-nilly just toss people out of your life that's no. so superficial but are people really adding value yeah. or do we need to learn to say no so emotional clutter can be boundaries. It can be about taking the mask off. It's all those annoying little things that are yeah. incomplete. Are you your best self around the people that you hang around yes, with? Yes, and are you your best self around yourself? Yeah. So how do you respect your own emotions and your own um, emotional intelligence? And are you true to your word? That's mm. a form of emotional clutter. If you say, you know, New Year, oh, I'm going to start gym, and you don't, that's clutter. 
Because now what happens is it's like you leave a thread of energy exactly. that's not completed. You need to tie a little bow or bring that energy back to you. Yeah. So that I always talk about if you were to leave the planet today, do you feel complete? Mm. Are you up to date or do you have any regrets? So the emotion, people often think it's all the negative emotions, that that's all mm. that um, emotional clutter is. Yeah. And we, we almost judge those emotions. So betrayal, guilt, anger, resentment, all that Oi. stuff. But we do and physically uh, it's hold on to them almost. And it's right here. Exactly. You can almost feel it, exactly. like a physical manifestation inside it's of in your body. It's in your solar plexus. Yeah. And I talk about, imagine fishing lines that you can't really see, but at the end of it, put a big bottle and add lead poisoning. And it's like, ugh. Mm. So, heavy. yes, and it's like that sparkle in our eye. Do you have that, you know, the French term, the joie de vie? Are you we, present? <laughs> we, you do. <laughs> but we can see when people don't have that. And yeah. what happens, though, is often our physicality, the space around us, starts reflecting what's going on in our psyche, in our mental space. Um, and I know for myself, if I'm feeling a little scattered, a little overwhelmed, a little too much going on, I, I stop putting things back kind of where they go. And then I look at my space and I go, what the heck's going on? And I kind of vickle it all back. But, you know, it takes it takes practice and it takes awareness. Because quite yeah. often, we're just numbed out of our lives. Exactly. And our space reflects that. And so I always say to people, sometimes take a person with you into your space. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be a professional organizer or a declutterer, but a good friend. But a good friend that is strict with you. Yeah. And not about tidying up your wardrobe, but saying... What might this reflect? I've got a spare room that is just full of everything. It needs to all go. It, that you've, be, you've inspired me. That now. can be called a scare room <laughs> instead <laughs> of your spare room. Or I talk about floor drobes. You know when you take off your pair of skinny jeans and then a sweater lands up and then someone's underpants and then a towel and so it becomes a floor drobe yeah. rather than a wardrobe. But it's about... I talk about the concept of can air come and move exactly, everywhere. Exactly. So flow. spirit, it flow. And so people put stuff under their beds. And what does that say about how you rest, how you rejuvenate, oh, wow. your relationship, if you're sleeping with a partner in the bed. What does it say about that? Okay, you put all this junk I'm underneath. totally inspired. <laughs> There's all of this information it, in here. It is. So that is the how and the why. It's practical. It's down to earth. It's as cheeky as I am. And it does all three types of clutter, so including body clutter. Is that like going to exercise and like shedding weight, like well, decluttering the three kilograms? It, it could be. But also it's just anything that steals, I said earlier, the, the sparkle in your eye or your vava vom, we love that yeah, word in yeah. South Africa. So anything that makes you feel tired, uh, headaches, lethargy, illness, stress, doesn't, it's not about weight, you know, chicks always mm, weight. It's not about that, it's about do you have enough energy at the end of your day yeah. to live and love your life? That's yeah. what it's about. So you're obviously very good at, at compartmentalizing mm -hmm things in your brain and I can see you do the same with your luggage. I know you're a great traveler too. And I'm I, a traveler and that's how I roll. I I'm travel a, the world. My grand yeah. taught me to roll. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's a great Japanese organizer at the moment that's almost doing origami with clothes. It's fantastic. Yes. But often people do piles, you know, so they'll put all their shirts in a pile and put them in the suitcase. But then you've got to try and get through them. Whereas exactly. here, I can literally see my entire wardrobe. Yeah. And rolling also, we, you know why we do it. It doesn't crease as much. And people go, no, you have to fault. No, rolling is fantastic. So I open it up and I've literally got my entire wardrobe there. You pull one thing out and you don't mess your whole case. It's so easy. How do you balance this decluttering and rolling with, with time management? Well, they're very linked. So remember I said brow too many browsers open? Mm -hmm. Because if you've got clutter, you're going to be wasting time. Whether it's looking for something or because you're not feeling so great in your body or you're worrying incessantly about that argument yeah. you've had with your friend this morning. Yeah. So it's going to eat into your time. So it's not just about, oh, I can't find my lipstick. Where's my lipstick? <laughs> Which can be, you know, where's my lipstick? But it's just about, um, are you taking care of what you need to in the right time? Or have you got so many things pulling at your energy that you're never present? Yeah. So for me, clutter is about being never present. Kate, what can our viewers do if they want to know more? Viewers can go to my website, kate-emerson.com, and on the front page, they can literally sign up for Spring Clean Your Life. And what I'll give everybody, for, um, so Afternoon Express viewers, is seven days. So literally every day, one email going, just do this today so it's not overwhelming. And then tomorrow, you just have to do part two. So it will take them through sequentially seven days of starting to clear their stuff. You are amazing. Thank you so much for this interview. Really, I think everybody needs to get their hands on this book and literally just declutter 
from their lives to be present. That is so important. Thank you so much for chatting to us. Pleasure. I'm going Thank to so clear much. out so much now. And your wardrobe, Jeannie. <laughs> the wardrobe. Oof, no. Now, <laughs> as you can see, decluttering has a huge impact on our physical and mental well-being. And speaking of well-being, make Five Roses Green Tea your beverage of choice this year. Not only will you find it super refreshing, but you'll know that every cup you drink is really good for you. Now, to win a fabulous Five Roses Green Tea gift pack containing perfectly pure green tea, and green tea flavoured with lemon and lime, apple and pear and mint and a copy of Kate's book, Clear Your Clutter. Simply SMS the keyword five roses, your name and city to double three seven two eight. SMSs are charged at one round fifty each. T's and C's apply and are available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. And until next week, remember, nobody makes better tea than you and five roses. Experience the world in a way less limited. Apply today at dinersclub.co.za. Blended with treacle syrup, Salati Demerara makes delicious honeycomb, cookies, crumbles, brine marinades and sweet potatoes. Salati, always good, always sweet. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, live right here on SABC3. It's so good to be with you this Thursday afternoon because we're making something so delicious. So it's perfect for all of those parties and it's basically good for those weekends where you kind of have all these leftovers at home and that sweetie cupboard is looking kind of stale. Throw them into cookie batter and you get the everything cookie, which is what we're making on the show today. Exactly. So this is the mixture that we made earlier. Okay. And you know what? You can use spoons. It's also great just to get in there and use your hands. Use your to fingers. Make a little bolligy and then... So it doesn't, like normal, normal cookies, space out. Out, right so if you place the cookies too close together you actually get a whole sheet pan of cookie dough ah. this guy does not do that though. okay how come because there's so much stuff in it exactly okay so you can pile them up nice and high you don't have to worry about them falling flat or they oh. don't rise as well they kind of stay exactly the same shape so as big as you want it when you put it in the tray that's how it's gonna end up okay cool so, so do you want me to pass this on to you I, I, li I like that you not don't have even sized no cookie. each cookie must be a different size you know it's all about the fun <laughs> you're making you putting all these random ingredients so I can make it a totally. random size I mean, too. Why, don't, why don't I make me. it why don't I <laughs> <laughs> why don't I make it the Nello cookie over there how's that okay what's there, that there, why is it the Nello cookie because it's just different. Just put like a mark in it so we know that it's my Okay, cool, one. that's okay, your one. So it's all size. that has to happen is once you get all your um, cookie dough on the sheet, you can actually freeze it at this stage. Huh. Freeze it and then take it off, off the tray, pop it in a freezer bag and keep it in your freezer for up to two months. For a reason? Why? Because, because cookie dough stays for that long? long? If, yeah, exactly. And there's so much, the sugar in there actually preserves and it keeps it perfectly, it stops the spoiling. Okay, cool. So if you come home from work one day and you just got that craving for something sweet, yes. then you have to go through take the whole the process. Take the batter the into pan. the oven. So what happens is, after about 10 minutes, and the trick Ooh. is also don't overcook them, take them out where they're still quite soft. If you're okay. looking at them and you're like, oh my goodness, that's not done, it's They're probably done. done. Okay, cool. So, you almost want it to be doughy. They need it to be kind of doughy. Exactly. So do you actually want to break one open for me? Sure, I can show you guys how that looks. You see? Oh, wow, I see. So it's still very, very much wet inside there, which is nice. Exactly. And these just came out the oven, so they're quite warm. And as they... You like it? It's such as they as they cool, they'll actually form up a bit more. So you oh, see yeah. that. You see? Oh, and it's got the peanut butter that you got from your pretzels exactly. that are in here. Everything sort of all those flavors are inside. So can this, I have is, a this is from a batch that I made earlier, and you can see it firms mm. up really well. And you get kind of a cross between a cookie and a brownie, which is so nice. I like it. Exactly. Like, it's really really nice like that. So if you want to go really crazy, I mean, we just had Valentine's Day. You could top it with some chocolate. I'm not mm. going to do it to that. But if, you, oh, if, please. if mm. you're in the dog box and you're going to make up for something, you know, you could get all fancy, oh, put man. it in a piping bag, just pipe it there, sorry. <laughs> you know, this is already so good. You're adding a whole bunch of other no, yummy, yummy, that's, yummy ingredients. That's really when you're in trouble. Otherwise, um, just don't. Serve it just as is. And you know, what's the best partner mm -hmm. with cookies? A milk. Uh, what, what, what? Let's see. Oh, oh my goodness. And that's just for you. I Milk can't even cookies. say cheers to you guys because I'm busy eating my cookie. But anyway, thanks for this claim. Oh, it looks pleasure. absolutely delicious. Hopefully Bonnie's going to like these too. Right now it's time for us to talk about something else. Sweet, the Princess Project. Your matric dance should be a magical night made of memories. But not all girls are fortunate enough to buy the dress of their dreams. United in their belief that every young woman deserves to look and feel beautiful, the Princess Project have partnered with Skip to make even more dreams come true this dance season. Joining us in the loft are Jane Rollinson on behalf of Skip and life coach Tia Oersthuizen. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. So what difference does the Princess Project make in underprivileged communities? 
Well, I think, as you've said, um, there are many families that can't afford to buy dresses for, for their daughter's matric dance. So the Princess Project goes into the communities and identifies the schools in need, um, and they find the girls that need that assistance, and they provide a, a dress for the night of their matric dance. So really, I think it's all about taking that dress that somebody's previously loved, that's full of hopefully very positive memories, and passing that magic on to that girl in wow. need. I mean, a matric dance is such a special night. I mean, it's almost like a rite of passage for yeah. a young girl becoming yeah. a woman. I remember mine. Mine was an absolute disaster. <laughs> but I for, loved mine. for a lot of girls, it could be a very special night. How important is it for a girl to have a very special dress on the night? You know, teenagers um, build their self-esteem on fashion. Wow. And fashion is very important for them. And um, the higher your self-esteem, the higher your confidence. And if they can't go to a matric farewell because of the fact that they couldn't find a dress or couldn't afford a dress, um, they'll feel left out. And, um, yeah, I think it could have um, potentially long-lasting effects. You're right. Wow. It's almost like a rite of passage, and it's that bridge to becoming a, a young woman yes. eh, entering the world. Mm -hmm. Now, I know a brand like Skip knows how important it is to women to feel beautiful. Why was this a natural partnership? So Skip loves fashion, as yeah. you say, and I think that they do understand that what you wear, it directly Im uh, affects how you, you feel. You feel. And as a brand, I think they've invested in, in expanding the lifespan of your most loved garments. And essentially, the Princess Project is all about that. They're taking a, a loved garment and they're extending that life and passing on that memory to someone else. So I think it's just to acknowledge that they do such tremendous work um, and really change the lives of, of many of these girls. So how can viewers get involved or contribute to the Princess Project? by donating a dress. Um, if they could get online to the Princess Project's website, they could find various drop-off points around the country and uh, donate dresses that anything from a matric dance dress to a wedding dress or a cocktail um, outfit would be fantastic. If they could document that on social media, that would be even more amazing yeah. using the hashtag pass on the magic um, and help us get the conversation going. Now, what do organizations like, or how, I suppose, do organizations like the Princess Project impact young girls in a community? In my kind of work, I work a lot with the stories of, of children and I can't help but think of the Cinderella story. And I think what they do is they really make every girl's dream come true. Um, they help build um, new stories, new memories, and they really make them feel worthy. That is fantastic. It's such a great organisation. It is. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming through and, and well done for the work that you're doing on the Princess Project. Thank you. Awesome. Now, making a girl's dream come true by passing on the magic and, do and donating an evening dress you no longer wear to the Princess Project. Visit www.princessproject.co.za for more details on where you can donate and follow the Skip campaign online. Hashtag pass on the magic. magic. We'll be right back. Skip loves your clothes as much as you do. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now make sure you catch top billing this evening at 7.30 on SABC3 with repeats on Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Tonight, Jade attends the magical wedding of celebrity couple Bianca Lagrange and David Johnson in the picturesque Banhoek Valley in Stellenbosch. And Joanne Strauss has the privilege of meeting Karen Tran, one of the world's leading floral designers who visited South Africa to give a floral masterclass. And afterwards, she attends the breathtaking gala dinner. This and plenty more on Top Billing tonight, so don't miss out. I, I feel like Bonnie is missing out on these cookies right here <laughs> uh, on the show because I keep looking at them and I go like, ah, oh, I just want to like... Oh, you see, that's exactly what happened. Never, never. How good do they look? I could never miss that. And apparently this is, for me, the special one, oh, the chocolate yes, on top. Yes, has to be. Extra calories because I think we, you can do with them. You know, you exercise so much, you live such a healthy lifestyle, it's time to live a little. We're decluttering our lives. Thank you. And putting all our clutter into a cookie. Yeah. Exactly. Guys, gentlemen, it's been such an honour having you on the show with us today. It's really, really cool to hear your stories. Both incredible creatives, 
changing the world in some way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hope these cookies change your stomach. You like. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the cookies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are welcome to go and take a bite of those. <laughs> now, you guys make sure you join us again tomorrow for Afternoon Express and tune in early or you'll miss out because during the first 15 minutes of the show, we chat to the kings of the weekend, DJ, Naves and Spectacular. And we're honored to have R&B reggae legend Judy Boucher live right here in our loft. In you got to know want to miss that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're also doing a story on people who are born in the leap year, right? Who are born yes. on the 29th of Feb. So we'd like you to please go up to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and share your story, because mm. this year is a leap year, and we're looking for people with entering st interesting yeah. stories. I'm pretty sure like some people must have got married or something on the leap year, so if you have, make sure you go and send that to us ASAP. It's time for us to say goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Afternoon Express. Good night. Happy eating. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, DJ Naves and Spectacular chat to us about their debut album, Kings of the Weekend. We catch up with comedian Dalen Oliver and the young magician Olwetu Dianti treats us to a special performance. A uh, never feel good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you express yourself.